Good morning, this is Angela with Parkos Permaculture. We're having a cool snap here in Portland, Oregon in late April. It's overcast and is supposed to be rainy this weekend, so this is the optimal time to plant out a lot of our perennial veg starts. Now today I'm going to be planting a specific plant which I featured yesterday in my unboxing video, and that plant is Apius Americana, also known as the American ground nut. It goes by other names including potato bean and hopness. It is a traditional indigenous food on the east coast of North America, and relatives in the same genus are highly cultivated in parts of Korea and Japan and a few other places in Asia, I believe. American groundnut is a leguminous, beautiful flowering vine. Now I ordered it from Goodwin Creek Nursery. You can see here it already has its tendency to vine right from when it's very small. Now in the first year or so it can grow about 10 feet, but as the plant ages and matures, it can get up to 20 feet long. So you want a good trellis. And that's why I'm sitting here in one of my cattle panel arch trellises because I'm going to be growing it here. Now behind me is a goji berry, and on the other side of the fence, actually right where the camera is, on that side of the trellis, I'm going to be growing my Apius Americana. So let's talk about what American groundnut needs. I also wanna clarify really quickly, American groundnut is not to be confused with the peanut, which is sometimes called a groundnut. The, again, the indigenous name is hopness, so sometimes, um, I think there's, there's a little bit of a push to have it recognized as, as that name because it clearly differentiates it from the peanut and also um, pays homage to its extensive history as an indigenous food crop in Eastern North America. So what does hopness need? It is a perennial, long-lived, vining, leguminous plant. And it produces these tubers on rhizomes and they are edible. Actually, all parts of the plant are technically edible. It grows in zones three through 10. Now I have seen some folks struggle with it in zones three and four, needing um, extra support and shelter in the winter. And in zones nine and 10, you would be um, prudent to give it some shade in the afternoon so it doesn't bake. Now it's not native to my part of the United States. So because it is a legume, it is a plant that spreads by rhizomes and it produces edible uh, tubers on those rhizomes. All three characteristics that make for a plant that has a potential to become invasive or take over in my garden. I'm going to start by growing it in a pot to see how it does here. Um, if it does well and thrives, I will think about after observing its growth habit for probably about three years, I'll decide whether I want to put it in the ground or not. But I've gotten the largest pot I can find, a freeze resistant pot. Apius Americana needs full sun, unless you are in the parts of the climate zone um, down on the far end where it gets hotter, consider afternoon shade. So legumes are nitrogen fixers, so I don't need to worry about having super great soil. Um, it actually will thrive in a variety of soils. But what I'm gonna be putting in my pot because it's what I have is a mix of soil from my garden, leaf mold because I have eight yards of it sitting in my driveway, and sand. When I grow any tuberous crop, um, particularly perennial ones like sunchokes or um, ones where I need to harvest the roots like horseradish, I amend my very clay soil with quite a bit of sand. That makes it much easier to harvest the underground food crop and it means they come out cleaner. So consider adding a good quantity of sand, make it much easier on yourself to harvest those groundnuts. Okay, so depending on what cultivar you have, the tubers are going to be from about this big to about the size of a potato, hopefully. And they contain 10 times as much calcium and twice as much iron as a potato the same size. They also have significantly more protein than a potato. So that along with the starch makes them a great food crop. Now, a caveat here, if you are thinking about growing this and eating it, if you are allergic to latex, they do contain some latex in them. And um, there is some thoughts that there is a potential allergy risk. Also, as with a lot of, um, the leguminous, less traditional leguminous crops, 
you need to cook them for a long time to break down the indigestible starches. So when you cook this plant, if you don't want to have an upset stomach afterward, particularly gas and bloating, cook it for at least 30 minutes. The tubers, that is. The flowers make great fritters and you can cook them very quickly. So I'm going to be planting this here and I'm going to show you how I do it. And then I'm going to talk about harvesting it because it is a perennial food crop, but it's not one that you typically can harvest every year. So let me um, get my pot ready and show you what I'm going to do to get it in the ground. Hang tight. Okie doke. Here is my frost proof pot. And into this pot I have put leaf mold because that's what I have on hand. And a good mixture of sand and soil for my garden. It's very big, very heavy. I wanted to put it where I wanted it before I um, put anything in it because now it's going to be hard to move around. Now with anything you plant in a pot, you want to overfill it because the soil will settle over time and you also want to be diligent about watering. Now this plant can handle some some drought as with most leguminous species, it is a pioneer and is pretty resilient. So here's my ground nut from Goodwin Creek Garden. I can tease a few plants out of this. I definitely can. Here you can see the tiny little nuts starting to form or tubers. And you might say, that's Angela, that's not, that's not a food crop. I can't eat that. It's so tiny, especially because I need to peel it before I cook it. Well, when you grow American ground nut, you actually don't harvest it every year. It needs to grow for about three years and have time to build big, large tubers before you can eat it. And just wait and enjoy how it looks in your garden as it scrambles up a trellis. But it is a crop that you have to be patient with. So I'm gonna plant it against the back half of this pot in order for it to reach the trellis quickly. And as it grows, I'm gonna come back and train it and lean it up against the trellis. Now I have all the rest of this room in this big honking pot. And I'm going to fill it with other things because I don't waste any space. My garden is a quarter acre. So I have these native ground cover strawberries and I'm just gonna start with those. I had to rip them up to um, make room for this pot. So these were growing in the ground right under where this pot is now. And I didn't want to kill them. So I'm gonna give them a new life in the pot. Now I wanna remove extra foliage as with anything I'm transplanting because that way they have less above ground material to support with their damaged roots. So pinch back some leaves, stick these in the ground, and these ground cover strawberries will help fill in. I think I'll probably put something else in this pot as well, just for some show. I'm not sure what yet. Um, maybe a geranium? I don't know yet. I'll have to think about these it. These in the ground here, and I will put some mulch on top of this to help conserve water. And I will show you what it looks like when I'm all done. Alrighty, here's my big pot. I'll pot it up. You can see my strawberries in here, and there are my three ground nuts, and I will be supporting them and helping them reach the trellis, and they should take off and get about 10 feet. So I'm really excited for that to happen. I'll let you know the progress of growing this plant and how it does here in my garden. So thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to learn more about permaculture and sustainable living and cottage gardening and Please let me know if you have things you would like for me to cover. Drop that in the comments and I will definitely give it a look. Now, just remember, this is a food crop that is not widely grown in the US and most of us aren't used to eating it. So make sure you do your due diligence and research how best to cook and prepare this food and whether you might have sensitivities that mean it's not the best food for you. Even if you don't grow it as a food crop, you might consider American groundnut for its beautiful flowers, its nitrogen fixation, and the fact that it is going to be a food source for your pollinators. So thanks again for watching. I'll be back soon.